Hey guys, how's it going? It's your boy Psycho Thigh Duck here back with another video. And if you guys don't know me, I'm just a guy who does YouTube for fun. And today I am very excited to bring you guys me surviving 100 days in Minecraft Pixelmon. We will be playing on the Poke Central server, and within the Poke Central server, we will be playing on the Ruby server. If you guys want to play with me or think that the server is cool, I'll leave a link down below so, so that you can go to the server. Also, a link to download the Technic launcher so you can get the necessary mod packs. I worked very hard on this video, so if you guys enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more. But I was really excited to get into this and to start my adventure, so I hopped right in. So let's go and start surviving 100 days in Minecraft Pixelmon. So on day one, I had a really hard decision to make, but after a lot of contemplation, I decided to go with Torchic as my starter. Then I talked to Professor Redwood, who suggested that I battle my rival, so that's exactly what I did. However, he also had a Torchic, and his was a little bit better than mine, so I actually ended up losing. But I did receive a keystone for the battle that I decided to wear around my neck like a gold chain. Then after exploring the server for a little bit, I ran into my first Pokemon that I captured. It was a level 15 Clefairy. I got an achievement for it. After looking around a little bit longer, I found a Mareep that I wanted to catch, so I went ahead and got into a battle with it and captured it. It basically lets you vote for this server and it gives you vote keys, which you can use to roll for different items. I get some good starter items. Including a random Pokemon egg and a casino token. I roll the Pokemon egg and I get a Mr. Mime, which isn't really great. Then I decide to go to the casino for the first time and use my token. I go over to the slot machine and put my token in. I roll for a Pokemon, and I get an Esper, which isn't a Pokemon I've really ever heard of, so I'm not sure if it's good or bad. As I'm leaving the casino, I see a Bagon, and I really want to catch it, as I know Salamanche is really good. I throw a couple of Ultra Balls at it, then decide to just weaken it in a fight and catch it. I end up capturing it and it's level 29, which is the highest level Pokemon I have. My starter also levels up. We go into day 2 and the sun is rising so I decide to just sit back and watch the view. I fought a trainer for the first time, but... She had a Genesect, so I decided to run away and never look back. Who would have guessed she had a Legendary? Then I go back to spawn and I see my first boss Pokemon. It's a P-Dove, but I don't have anything strong enough to fight it. Then while I'm going over to the Pokemon Center, I see a level 50 Clefairy. I decide to catch it. I talk to Nurse Joy to heal all my Pokemon up. I go into my PC and I look at the Clefairy. I add it to my party because it's level 50. It has an okay nature. Then as I'm turning around, I see another level 50 Clefairy. So I go ahead and catch that one too. I go into my PC and the Clefairy isn't better than the one that I already had, so I go ahead and keep the one I have on in my party, and we move on. Then I go back to the same area because I had luck there before. And what do you know, a level 50 Rhydon spawns, so I go ahead and try to catch it. I get into a battle with it, and I eventually catch it. Now this is the strongest Pokemon I have in my party. I check its nature, and unfortunately, it's the exact opposite of what I want. But we'll make do because it's level 50. I turn the corner and start running, and then I see a couple of Beldum. Beldum are extremely rare and only spawn 
during sunrise and sunset. I waste all of my Ultra Balls trying to catch it because the catch rate on Beldum is the same of Legendary. As I am running around through the wilderness, I found another trainer. I decided to fight her and I make quick work of her. I get a little cocky and I decide to fight another trainer that's level 45. It takes the entire night of day 3, but eventually he overtakes me and I lose. Then I decide to watch the sunrise of day 4. It's quite a nice sight. I look over to my right and I see Eradicate just enjoying the sunrise with me. I might have made friends for life. At the start of day 4, I open up the shop to buy some balls. And then I realize you can't buy balls anymore on this server. You can only buy apricorns, which means I have to make all my balls from scratch. Then I go back to spawn and I fight another trainer. This one also has Genesect, but now I'm ready. I leave the spawn area and I see a couple of people with exclamation points above their heads. I realize that they're part of the game's story mode, but after talking to the first one, I realize I'm not ready to fight any trainers yet. Then I do the command slash Poke Vault, which lets me look at all the Pokemon I've stored in my vault throughout my time on the server. I try to add them to my inventory, but it won't let me until August 16th. Then as I go back to spawn, I see a level 65 Zangoose that I'm unfortunately not able to catch. After that, I decide to go to the random teleport guy and go out into the wilderness and try to find a spot to build my base. Then I finally do one of the most basic things in Minecraft, and I finally collect some wood. While I'm out in the wilderness, I find a Master Ball loot. Also a hidden loot. Now it is day 5. I see a cop trainer and I decide to beat him. After I beat him, I see another trainer and I beat him too. Then, as I'm walking away, I see a Meowth. Meowth's one of my favorite Pokemon, so I decide to take the ball I just got and throw it at him. Unfortunately, I was one roll away from catching him. Nearby, I find a mine, so I decide to go into it and start collecting some iron, coal, and other resources. There's also a Master Ball loot there. I get a pair of Wise Glasses. I also decide to go deeper down into the mine. Then I start mining all types of things, because in the Pixelmon mod, there are ores that aren't in regular Minecraft. Like... Crystal, and Ruby, Sapphire, Bauxite, and Silicon. Amethyst, too. After all the mining, I go back to spawn and I heal up with Nurse Joy. Then I do another random teleport and I spawn in a savanna slash roofed forest biome, which is where a lot of really nice Pokemon spawn. Then I see a trainer. He's level 38, so I decide to take him down with my OP level 50 ride on. I make quick work of him. As I'm leaving, I see a gold legendary boss Hoot Hoot. I decide to battle it with my Rhydon since I have super effective advantage. I barely beat it. As a reward, I get an Ability Capsule and an Eviolite. Which I decide to give to my Rhydon since it boosts his defenses by 50%. Then I remember that I can actually ride on Pokemon that aren't actually flying. I get on my ride on and I start riding through the land. Now it's about to be the sunrise of day 7 and I have an idea to just build a boat and start looking for a base spot. So I do and I ride off into the sunrise.
I spend the entire day of day eight also looking for a base spot in a boat. On day nine, I finally find a spot and it's a sunflower plains biome. So I decide to survey all of the land and look around to see where exactly I want to build my base at. It has a very nice biome advantage, as well as geographically it looks quite nice. I travel to the top of the hill and decide I want to build my base up here. On day 10, I decided to check out all of the surrounding areas of this Sunflower Plains biome just to make sure there weren't any god tier spots to build a base around that I was missing out on. Then on day 10, I claimed the area and I started clearing out all the trees around me. That took a while, but after that was done, I wasn't done yet. I needed to level out the ground so I started clearing out the dirt too. At the end of day 11, a Rayquaza spawns on the server in an Extreme Hills biome. Luckily it didn't spawn on me because I wouldn't be able to catch it. After I level out the entire top area, I have an idea to carve out the bottom area too so I can build a base in the lower part. I spend the entire day carving this out. On day 13, I have more vote crates to take advantage of. So I go ahead and use them, and I get an XP share on my last one. I'm super excited, so I start jumping around with the XP share in my hand, and then I start showing it off to people around me on the server. Whether or not they could see me, I was still just having a blast. And then I start celebrating with the Akatsuki, which is something Jiraiya normally wouldn't do. Then I open up a TM case that I got with my vote crates, and go to the casino to open up a couple of tokens. I end up getting a Gallade, Thwack. a Poliwhirl, <laughs> and a Mimikyu. I add the Gallade to my party, but the other two I wasn't too interested in. Day 14 rolls around, I'm at my base just chilling, and then I come over to the edge and I look down at the lake, and I realize it's oddly shaped like a... Well, I think you guys get the picture. Also, during day 14, my Torchic evolves into Combuskin. On this server, you're on this server you always get a shiny starter, so shiny Combuskin was really looking good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. And he finally learned a fighting move. On day 15, I needed a lot of glass, so I found an area with a lot of sand and I completely mined it out. I spent the entire day mining sand. On day 16, I was back at the base area, and I was just cooking up sand, stone, and all the resources I had collected while mining. Then I went into the shop and bought some apricorns so I could start the beginning of my apricorn farm. On day 18, I got into a boat again, and I went into the water to fight trainers. On day 19, I did a random teleport, and I found a huge mine, so I went ahead and started mining again. I needed a lot of resources so I could sell them and get money. As well as whenever I found move tutors, I could use the resources to get new moves for my Pokemon. I found a lot of different ores. On day 20, we were back at D Lake at the base, and we were cooking up all of the resources we had just mined, as well as waiting for our apricorns to grow. While all that stuff was cooking up, I decided to go back down to the lower part of the base and keep carving it out. Then during the night of day 20, I set up a sugarcane farm because I was going to need a lot of books. For bookshelves and enchanting. Then on day 21, I started harvesting the apricorns and extending the apricorn farm. I extended it, and then extended it some more. 
On day 22, I decided to set out on my boat and decide to find another base spot. Since on this server you can have multiple set homes, and I really wanted to build some sort of underwater base. While I was fighting a trainer in the water, my bag on evolved. He had turned into Bagon the Sleepy, and he learned Protect. Unfortunately, he was still a long way to go from Salamance. While I was boating around, I found a lot of loot on the shores. Day 23 rolled around, and I was still collecting loot and just boating around. During the night while boating around, I find a very cool looking mesa biome. I contemplate building next to it but I decide to keep moving. Also, I find more loot. Then, during day 24, I find even more loot. And more. And more. And even more loot. I find so much loot that I have to slash home, empty my items, and then slash back. But then, I find more loot. But then I find even more loot. On day 25, I finally find a spot that I want to build my base on, so I plan to build a base on top of it, and then build a base underneath. Day 26 rolls around, and I keep on cooking up glass and stone, as well as preparing to build the base. Day 27 comes around, and I'm fighting a trainer, when all of a sudden, a legendary spawns in a flower forest biome. And then I realize something. I'm in a flower forest biome. So I turn around, and there's a Meloetta spawned in right behind me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have any balls to catch it with, so I go into my chest and I muster up all the balls that I can find, and I make a last ditch effort to try and catch it. I completely fail, so I have to give it away to someone else on the server. On day 28, I finally make an enchanting table. Then I go ahead and make bookshelves, and I surround the entire enchanting table with bookshelves so I can get level 30 enchants. On day 29, I worked on carving out the spot that I wanted to build my farm at. And then, all of a sudden, I received a master ball for using Poke Central through the Technic mod pack. Day 30 was starting, and I went ahead and caught a level 50 Beedrill that was flying over my farm. Also, I went ahead and fought a couple of Pokemon, and my Combuskin finally evolved into Blaziken. Now, this was a shiny Blaziken, so... He looked absolutely sick, and I was so happy to have Blaziken finally. He was one of my favorite Pokemon, and definitely one of my favorite starters. Day 31 came around and we finally had all of our ores cooked up, so we went ahead and got all of them in our inventory and tried to sell them in the shop. And that's when I realized that after the server wiped, they changed it so that you can't sell your ores anymore. So I wasted all that time mining for nothing. I was so upset that I went to spawn and I killed a mill tank just for no reason. Then I went to see Nurse Joy to cheer me up, but she was busy, so I left and decided to come back later. After that, I went back to the farm and decided to spend the entire night beating my hammer on the anvil. On day 32, I made big progress on the base. I had the entire foundation laid out. And then I beat a boss, and I got a relic item. I went to the shop and realized that relic items all sell for around 20,000, so so I went ahead and did that, and I was instantly rich. Then on day 33, I took all the glass I had, and I decided to finally finish the top of my base. It looks exactly like an Ultra Ball. It's not a perfect dome, but when you come up to the top and you look down on it, it looks exactly like an Ultra Ball, which is what I was going for. I spend day 34, 35, and 36 working on my base and trying to finish it. Then on day 37, I beat a boss. I, after that, I show off my brand new base. So I come up to the top of it so I can show off the Ultra Ball of it again. 
I really outdid myself on that. It looks great. Then you come down over to the front and there's a doorway. You can enter the farm, and when you do, there's yellow and black apricorn trees everywhere. Since it's an ultra ball dome, I figured I'd better make it an ultra ball farm. Then you can come down the staircase in the middle, and the secret hidden base is at the bottom of the staircase. I made an ice floor so that you could slide around. Also, I like the design, it looks slick. I made a glass tank in the middle with water in it, so it's kind of like an aquarium. And then I made the ceiling glass, and I made it out of dyed glass to look like a Pokeball. And I put lava above it so that the whole place was lit up. On day 38, I finally use all the levels that I've accumulated to enchant my pickaxe. I get a really good efficiency and fortune pickaxe. After that, I decide to make some running shoes. And I turn those running shoes into new running shoes. Which give you a 75% speed boost. Now that I have my speedy shoes, I decide to craft armor to fill in the rest of my slots. That's when I decide to craft Team Aqua armor. After I craft it all, I enchant as much of it as I can. I get some pretty good enchants. I enchant the boots with Death Strider 3. And then after enchanting all the rest of my armor, I put a book in there and realize that it's Feather Falling 4. So I spend the rest of the day getting levels, so I can go back, get the Feather Falling 4 enchantment for my boots, and combine it in an anvil. These boots just needed on breaking 3 and then they were god tier. On day 39, I decide to spend the entire day crafting Ultra Balls now that I had my Apricorn farm up and going. I bought a mechanical anvil from the shop to help out with the process. Then I use the global trade system to buy a couple of items. I get a music disc, some horse oh, armor, really and a TM. I decide to display them in item frames. Huh? I look at my armor, and then I realize my boots are almost depleted, so I have to take them off. Before the server wipe, when I used the boots, they never had a durability, but now they do, and they are about to break, so I can't use them anymore. On day 41, I'm exploring in the wilderness by the casino, and I find another Beldum again. I completely fail to catch it. Then I go back to the farm, and I decide to continue carving out the lower level. On day 42, I do a slash home, and a Magikarp is just chilling right in my water tank. I had spent the entire night of day 41, and the entire day of the entire day of day 42 building, so my base was finally complete, and I was ready to show it off. So I built an elevator with that was completely surrounded by water, and you could take the elevator up, back up into the farm, or you could take it down to the lower level. I had an infinite water source in here, as well as the fish tank continued all the way down towards the bottom. Then I had a nice balcony and a glass wall overlooking D Lake. I also had a couple of Reggie Steels guarding the place. And I had a trade machine, as well as an enchanting room. Then you could take the elevator all the way down and it had an exit so I could run out if I wanted to. 
I spent a lot of time building the base, but I was very happy with the results. On day 43, I got on breaking 3 for my boots finally, and I decided to use them, but they were still breaking extremely fast, so I still couldn't. I needed to get mending. I also busted a hole in the aquarium so that I could throw garbage items down, down the water flow, and they would end up going all the way down and filtering out into D Lake. As if D Lake wasn't dirty enough, now I was polluting it with my garbage items. On day 44, all of my apricorn trees are completely grown, so I decided to harvest them all and get some apricorns cooking up. Then I leave spawn again and I decide to finally take on these Team Enigma trainers, who were actually really really easy to fight and I probably should have done this sooner. After taking them down with ease, I talk to Thinky again and he tells me that there's a bunch of gems on the server. And not only that, but that if I beat them that and come back to him, then he'll give me a reward. Then at the end of day 44, I fight a trainer. Day 45 rolls around, and I feel like catching a couple of new Pokemon. I capture a Cacturne. Also, I capture a really high level Laron. Then while I'm exploring the environment, I find a massive boss Garchomp. I know I'm not able to beat him, so I call on a veteran from the server to come help me out. He one-shots it with his shiny Gyarados. Then he very kindly lets me keep the items. It's day 46, and I beat a boss Pokemon that's outside of my base, and I get another relic item. I go into the shop and sell it, and I get another easy 20k. Relic items are sort of overpowered, and easily the best way to get money on the server. I also have 6 more vote crates to take advantage of, so I go ahead and roll for them. On the last one, I land one away from a rare key, and I was very upset. I open up a couple of TM cases that I got, and I get some pretty decent TMs that I didn't have yet. On day 47, I take advantage of the global trade system, and I buy an Aerodactyl level 1 that someone was selling. It didn't have a perfect nature, but it was good enough and I had never had one before, so it looked super cool. I took it outside to ride it, and as I was turning around, I realized there was a massive boss Pokemon right next to my base. I take a closer look at it, and I realize that it's a Mewtwo. I take out my Noctowl and fly up to it so that I can try to see what level it's going to be. I try to defeat it and it faints all my Pokemon, so I have to call on help again from the people on the server. Someone comes over and helps me out. They take the Pokemon down in one hit with a level 1 Pokemon and I am absolutely astounded. It just doesn't make any sense to me, so I go ahead and ask him what he was even using. And he says he used a level 1 Mimikyu and the move Destiny Bond. And... That's when it hit me, and I was like, wow, that's completely genius. After hearing that strategy, I made it a goal of mine to get a Mimikyu.
Then while defeating a boss Pokemon during the night, I get a lucky egg. It's the start of day 48 and I beat another boss Pokemon. And then I decide to catch a wild Pikachu. So that I can catch other Pokemon with ease. During the night of day 48, I see a very high level Dredagon and I decide to catch it. I add it to my party. During day 49, I decide to evolve the Pikachu into Raichu since I have a Thunderstone. I know that the Raichu will be a good member of the team, as well as make it very easy for me to catch Pokemon by paralyzing them. He didn't have Thunder Wave yet, but I was planning on getting it. While exploring, I also saw a War Turtle, and I decided to catch that too. It actually had a pretty decent nature. Then I defeated a boss Bayleaf, and I got another lucky egg. On day 50, I decided to make Pokemon paintings and place them all around my base. There was a limited amount of paintings you could make, but they were extremely cool and, and spruced up the place. After that, I decided to teleport to my second set home because I wanted to start making some headway on my base. A couple of seconds later, a legendary Manaphy spawned in the deep ocean biome right next to me. I didn't have any balls, so I decided to let someone on the server teleport to me and take it. Unfortunately, this was the second legendary I had to give up so far. The only reason I wasn't able to catch it was because I had all of the items in my chests robbed. Apparently I didn't claim my chests properly, so people on the server were able to come in and take my items. It all happened within a span of 10 minutes, so one person decided to come in there, take my items, and slash back it a bunch of times. Unfortunately, this was a really huge setback as I had no pokey items or ores or building materials left. So I decided to build a secret chest room off screen and hide all my items. But this was part one of I survived 100 days in Minecraft Pixelmon. If you guys want me to do a part two, then leave a like down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, but this was your boy Psycho Thigh Duck signing out. I'll see you guys later.